Today, someone on Facebook told me that famed civil rights leader and labor advocate Cesar Chavez spouted neo-Nazi talking points because he was in favor of controlling borders and illegal immigration. The left has gone insane, completely insane. Now, now don't get me wrong. I don't mean everyone on the left everywhere, but whatever the collective left is of these vocal activists and politicians and journalists, they've lost the plot. They have gone nuts. And I've got a series of things that I'm going to bring, bring up to explain to you why they're crazy. Now, listen, on the political spectrum, I still believe in left wing policies, but the colloquial tribe left that typically dominated, you know, our culture, you have the left and the right, the two dominating forces. The mainstream left is this weird split faction of people who believe complete and utter contradictory nonsense because they're so desperate to form a cohesive tribe that's really expansive. They bring in ideologies that can't actually work together, like religious fundamentalists who don't believe there is such thing as trans or LGBT rights with LGBTQ rights activists. It doesn't make sense. First thing I want to do is I want you to look at this chart here that I've got from The Economist. I, I've shown you this before. Maybe you've seen it. Maybe you haven't. Here we can see economist data. It says from Professor Adam Bonica. Now, in 1980, you can see where the Democrats and the Republicans are. You can see if you follow this over time, the Republicans actually stay relatively cohesive. The fact that there is a big hill shows that the bulk of Republicans kind of agree on the same things. Now let's look at where the left has gone. The Democrats have slowly moved further and further left. Their hill is getting wider and wider. And look at 2010. It encompasses almost the entire spectrum of far left to center left. And now here we are in 2018, where the conservatives are cohesive in the middle and the more the Democrats are from center all the way to far left with the biggest peak actually leaning kind of to the medium to far left. This is what's going on with the Democrats. Now, here's the thing. Centrist Democrats believe in borders. They believe in civil rights. They believe you shouldn't be racist. That, like Martin Luther King said, you should judge a person based on the content of their character and the color of their skin. Or like Cesar Chavez, si se puede, he would say. But he was actually in favor of restricting illegal, immigra uh, illegal immigration because mass migration depresses wages. It's a fact. And then I have people on the left saying to me, no, that's not true. We have a minimum, a minimum wage. The wages can't go lower than that. It increases competition. It means that if there's 100 jobs available and you let in 1,000 migrants without checking for what's going on, you are displacing 900 plus people, your own citizens and the migrants. And yes, many of them will work illegally for less than minimum wage because the law be damned. Of course they do it. They work under the table. It does depress wages. Now we can argue that all day and night, but the point is, when you have the far left who believes in open borders, doesn't care what happens, they actually, look, oh my God, this left-wing activist told me, the Koch brothers have been right all the time and that we should have open borders. Because a long time ago, the left believed it was a right-wing conspiracy from the Koch brothers and other industrialists. They wanted, they wanted open borders so they could move their factories to other countries where there's no labor laws and they can bring in unskilled labor without, without filing any paperwork, without having to agree to, to wages, they don't want minimum wage. They don't want labor laws. They want to bring in unskilled work to do, you know, whatever, take, take whatever they can get. That's what they used to believe. Now, I actually had a guy say, Cesar Chavez was, was, was spouting neo-Nazi talking points and, and the Koch brothers are right. And I'm like, if you find yourself on the left thinking Cesar Chavez was a bad guy and the Koch brothers are right, you are not on the left. However, they agree with a bunch of weird lefty positions that just don't make sense. Here's the thing. You're a centrist Democrat, right? Center left. You're right here on the spectrum. Well, you don't necessarily think we should have universal health care, but the government does play a role in health care to an extent. That's what I believe. I would love universal health care. I would just like to figure out if we can do it, how we can do it. Is it possible? It's a big question. It's a lot of work. The far left believes like, let everybody into the country and give them all health care. Well, we're at odds with each other. Yet the Democrats are trying to get all of them. Now, I'm going to move on from, from this issue and focus on what happens when you tell a progressive, like Eric Weinstein, uh, Weinstein, for instance, I, f sorry for pronouncing your last name wrong. He is a progressive, supports Bernie Sanders, yet he is being told now that he could be banned from Twitter because he wants to use actual biologic, bi biology. He wants this because Twitter has said misgendering and deadnaming are bannable offenses. Eric tweeted, 
It looks like Twitter TOS moves towards forcing everyone who discusses sex and gender correctly from a biological perspective, as I do, to live at the whim of the platform. He then says you got to follow him somewhere else because Twitter actually banned someone for saying men aren't women. Can you imagine the utter insanity that is existing on the left where they deny science? And the problem with this is that even among the left, they recognize that men and women are social. They, they believe men and women are social constructs and they're two different things. Why then would you ban someone because they said men aren't women? Because it's not about what she said. It's about what she believes inherently. It doesn't matter if what she said is factually true. It matters that Twitter has gone insane. And Eric also tweeted, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm certainly not going to let trans activists, quote, have biology and terrorize everyone else, including trans folks. To a science activist, this is science phobic. You want to discriminate against scientists, Jack? Then pull the effing trigger. The left is going insane. They are trying to form this massive coalition of everybody, and you can't do it. You can't include progressives like the, Weinstein, the Weinsteins, Brett and, and Eric, and then tell them they can't use, they can't have science. You can't deny science while simultaneously claiming you're going to support scientists. It doesn't work that way. But wait, there's more. Because Twitter banned conservative combat veteran and Federalist contributor uh, Jesse Kelly, and no one knows why. I'll tell you why. It's because the left is going insane. This coalition of people is trying to be so inclusive, they're including people in their collective who you can't. So, so all that really matters now is you say you're on the left, plain and simple. That's it. That, that, that's how it works. Agree with what they say or else, even if it doesn't make sense. We don't know why this person was banned. You see, Kelly, everyone's confused. He was permanently banned with no explanation. He broke no rules, was never gonna, given a warning. Most people, including Megan Murphy, right? Megan Murphy is the feminist who was banned for saying men aren't women. She was actually given warnings and she refused. You can see Eric Weinstein, but they, they banned, they, they banned him, right? And so I actually, now, now let's move on to the next story because I pulled up a bunch, right? We're going to go through all these various instances that have happened in the past week or so that are driving me insane and need to be talked about. How about this, this uh, individual, he's a professor, I believe. He is a, a professor of international political theory at King's College London and by fellow at Pembroke College, Cambridge. He's a fellow of the British Academy and a member of the International Studies Association. He is a well-renowned intellectual, and he's about to lose his job. Why? He told a lame joke in an elevator. He got in an elevator, and someone said, which floor? And he said, haha, lingerie, please, because it's an old joke, as if you're going to a department store floor to look at lingerie. Now he's being accused of harassment, and his job is on the line. But let's carry on, because I'm not done. No, certainly not. Uh... So this is from the Daily Wire, and it's this other story I had, but I'm going I'm to mention it anyway. They're claiming that Twitter is actually violating their own policy because they didn't give a reason when they claim they should. But let's, let's move on to this one. Ocasio-Cortez has compared the migrant caravan to Jews fleeing Nazi Germany. The left is going insane. Ocasio-Cortez believes things that don't make sense, like 200 million people in the U.S. are working for less than $20,000 a year. That, that's made up. The mainstream media is calling her out. Washington Post gave her like four Pinocchios or whatever they do, fact-checking her statement saying they're false. PolitiFact said what she's saying is not true. Why then are people rallying around her? They're saying things like, oh, the, the right is obsessed with Cortez. She just compared a bunch of economic migrants throwing stones at border patrol agents as the same as not Jews fleeing Nazi Germany. She compared people who were offered asylum in Mexico, who were offered jobs in Mexico, who instead chose to cut concertina wire and rush the U.S. border as Jews fleeing Nazi Germany. That, in my opinion, is complete and utter insanity. And then I look and I see Michael Avenatti saying something that makes sense. I, I pulled him up specifically because it seems like, love him or hate him, a lot of people don't like him. A lot of people on the right, they call him names and insult him. But as someone who is a center-left individual, I find this completely refreshing. I'm not saying I'm a big fan of the guy. No, just I appreciate that he's being reasonable. Here's what he tweeted. This is from October 18th. Okay, I'm highlighting this because of what happened in Mexico. We cannot allow families to be separate at our border, mass caravans of people to overburden our border, a porous or open southern border, ICE to carry out draconian policies. We need reasonable solutions that keep us safe but allow for legal immigration. He reiterated today that anyone who runs on abolishing ICE will lose. You will lose to Trump. Why? Because immigration is now the number one issue. Cortez, 
She just says gaff after gaff. What she says is completely ludicrous. We've got Twitter banning people for, for, for wanting to speak in terms of science. We've got activists telling me on Facebook, Cesar, Ch Cesar Chavez believed in neo-Nazi talking points and the Koch brothers were right. And I'm sitting, sitting here thinking, what the hell happened to the left? They have lost their minds. Now, now I want to address Avenatti's post because of what's going on in Mexico and say why I think it's refreshing that at least this exists, okay? Families should not be separated at our borders, in my opinion, because border crossings, as my understanding, are misdemeanors. But I understand there's nuance. You want to make sure that children who are with the adults are actually the children of those adults and not being trafficked, which means in some circumstances we need to separate them, but not in separate facilities. It's also important to realize that CBP and ICE have specific roles, which means we don't need to put them in the same kind of facilities as we would for general law enforcement. We can say, okay, family units, individual units, we can do that. The reason I think we should, and we should be cautious about separating families, is because I, I think of that great quote, when you fight monsters, be careful you don't become one, for when you gaze into the abyss, it gazes back into you. It's a, there's a fine line. We're not going to absolutely be like all families will always be together because we do need to make sure that we're not having children be trafficked, right? That, that's, we're trying to protect the innocent. But it also means that we have to deal with the crisis. We have to deal with those storming the borders, but we need to make sure we don't become monsters. We have to, which means we have to put limits on ourselves that will make our jobs harder to make sure we never create the dystopian nightmare that many people have predicted in the future. But he's right. Mass caravans of people to overburden our border? Spot on. Thank you, someone on the left actually saying this. A porous or open southern border? Thank you, someone on the left actually saying this. And ICE to carry out draconian policies. Now this kind of, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. I'm not sure what draconian policies he's, he's, thinking, he's saying. This may just be him reiterating the family separation at the border, or this could be him just trying to make sure he, 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 he says something, he signals enough to the left that he has criticisms of ICE. That's fine. I'm not, I've, there's certainly things that Avenatti has said or done that I, that I will draw into question, but when you look at the sea of madness, denying science, overt racism on the left, judging people based on the color of their skin, I will say at least there's this, at least there's some people saying some things, and at least there are people agreeing with him on Twitter. Because I'll tell you what, Ocasio-Cortez, that she just continually says the most crazy things in the world. We continually see people banned from Twitter for no reason, making Twitter irrelevant. We see people risking, almost losing their careers for making a silly joke. We see people threatened with being banned because they want to speak in terms of biology. And we can see, according to The Economist, that the left is breaking apart. It is f pushing from the fringe far left all the way to the center. It is just absolutely falling apart. Meanwhile, conservatives are coalescing around common ideas. I could go on for hours. This was just a few series of different ideas that I wanted to rant about because I feel like I'm losing my mind. The left, as we know it, the tribal colloquial left, has gone nuts. Crazy. Absolutely insane. Now, I'm going to end by saying this. People say, Tim, why do you still say you're on the left? Because whether or not the other people are crazy doesn't change my political beliefs. I still agree with center left and social liberal policies, but I'm sick and tired of seeing this nightmare of weird insanity. Eric Weinstein, for instance, is also on the left. We can both still be on the left and point to the left and say, you're losing your damn minds. It's crazy. Anyway, rant over. I've got more videos coming up in just a few minutes, so stick around.